Welcome to this introduction to accessibility. We're going to talk about what accessibility is, why it's important, and how we go about building more accessible products. There are many ways to define digital accessibility, but at its most fundamental, digital accessibility is the design and delivery of technology and related services that are open and easily usable by everyone, regardless of physical, cognitive, or sensory abilities. Take a minute to think through everything you did last week. What technologies did you use or interact with? You might have thought of your mobile phone, computer, or TV. What about technology in your car, like Bluetooth or navigation, or paying for something via credit card? Maybe you have a smart home appliance, or have used a QR code to check in. Technology is everywhere, and we rely on it for many of our everyday activities. Because we rely on technology so much, the United Nations considers access to technology and the internet a human right. So, who needs accessibility? In 2011, the World Health Organization published their World Report on Disability, referring to disability as a complex phenomenon reflecting the interaction between a person and the society in which they live. This is known as a social definition or social model of disability. When we don't design for all user needs, we create a mismatch at the point of interaction between individuals and their environments and situations. Mismatches could be physical, they could be technical, or they could be attitudinal. For example, if a person is of short stature or uses a wheelchair, and a kiosk is designed with controls that are out of their reach, this is a mismatch. Another example would be if a person without sight uses a screen reader to read content aloud to them, but the content is designed in a way that it cannot be read out. This is also a mismatch. What other mismatches can you think of? If we consider disability as a result of mismatched human interactions, rather than a personal health condition, then we can better understand how to create accessible experiences. When we design for accessibility, we want to consider five personal characteristics, vision, hearing, mobility, speech, and cognition or neurology. Often, it is people with a permanent ongoing impairment that we think of when creating accessible experiences, but impairment can also be temporary or situational. For vision, we might see a permanent impairment in someone who is blind, a temporary impairment in someone with cataracts, or a situational impairment in someone in bright sunlight. A permanent impairment to hearing might be a person who is deaf, a temporary impairment might be someone with an ear infection, and a situational impairment might be a bartender in a loud bar. For mobility, we might see a permanent impairment in a person with one arm, a temporary impairment in a person with a broken arm, or a situational impairment in a new parent holding a baby they can't put down. A permanent impairment to speech might be someone who is nonverbal, a temporary impairment someone with laryngitis, or a situational impairment someone with a heavy accent. And finally, we might see a permanent cognitive and neurological impairment in someone who has had a stroke, temporary in someone with a concussion, or situational in someone who is intoxicated. Anyone can experience an impairment, and many of us will, particularly as we get older. So while accessibility is necessary for some, it is useful for all. Intopia.